Hey everybody, what's up? This is Rich. I think it's safe to say that the Windows Live Movie Maker is a source of frustration for many because the way in which it operates compared to Windows Movie Maker is completely different. I actually have used this for a little while and have come to the decision that yes, it is in fact better than the old Windows Movie Maker with XP. Once you get used to the way it does things, it will throw you for a loop at first. Yes, there is a learning curve. Hopefully this little tutorial will help you out getting things done. Now what I'm going to do is show you how to do some really basic stuff in here, stuff that was second nature in um, Windows Movie Maker for XP that you do in here. Now the first thing we're going to show you is how to transition one scene to another. So what I'm going to do is do this with images. And uh, what I did right there, it says drag videos and photos here or click to browse for them. You can do add photos from here or just click in this window. So I'm in the uh, sample pictures direct, excuse me, directory for Windows 7. And I'm going to add in two images here. I'll do the koala and I'll click this again and I'll do the penguins. Okay, so I've got this and this and uh, they're each lasting for five seconds a piece. So, and oh, by the way, if you want to change how long they stay on screen, see this little green thing up here where it says video tools, I can hit edit and it shows the duration. So I can change uh, the image to last for longer or shorter. I'll change this to three seconds each. So I'll click this one in three seconds and click this one, change it to three seconds. By default, it's five. Now, if I rewind this and I play one, Two. Okay, it's a, it's a hard cut. So what I want to do is I want to make a transition, a dissolve from one to the other. Now the way that you did this in the old Windows Movie Maker is you went into the timeline here and you dragged it slightly, but it doesn't work that way in here, so how do you do it? Okay, you take the one you want to transition to, that being the last one, and then what we do is we go to the Animations tab, and then I drop down this menu here, and I go to dissolves and this one right here is a very simple fade when you hover over it you'll notice it actually shows a preview of it which is good so I'll just do a simple fade here like that and it shows the duration you can change it if you want and I'm going to keep it at one second so I'm going to rewind this again hit play and there's the dissolve it's a nice simple dissolve the next thing I'm going to show you is actually how to put text on screen <clears throat> this is uh, notably better than the old Windows Movie Maker uh, what I'm going to do is I re rewound to the beginning, go to home, and uh, there's title, caption, and credits. The one you want to go for is caption. Now the cool thing about this compared to Windows Movie Maker is that you can have it, uh, in Windows Live Movie Maker, the improvement is that you can have it any any position, which is great compared to before, whereas you had to take what it gave you either in the center or the bottom. So if I want to take this and I take this box and just resize it in such a way, or you can drag it like this. So I'll put it at the top left here and I'll justify it to the left. And then I'll highlight the text, make it bold, make it a little larger, 36 point, stretch the box out a little bit. This is a test, just like that. And you also have the start time and the text duration. And here's something also interesting is how you want it to appear. If you hover over these, see those animations happen? It's pretty nifty. And you can drop down the menu and there's a whole bunch of them here. So I'm going to choose a simple one, just have it spin in like this. So now it's officially there. Now you notice on the timeline here, actually before I continue a few notes about this timeline. In order to make it larger or smaller, you have to pay attention to the bottom right here. And if I want it to be a little bit easier to see, I just zoom it in. And in addition to that, this button right here, I have it as extra small icons, but I can go to medium and make this a lot easier to deal with. Now you'll see the text here where it says this is a test and it's only going for the first scene. What I can do is uh, actually take this and when I click on it, you can change the duration time and the start time and the end time. So I will change this from two seconds 
to four seconds and you'll see how it goes all across the timeline. This whole thing is the timeline. It wraps with and it does it and depending on your icon size you can zoom in and out. I like having mine as extra small because it looks very similar to the way the old Windows Movie Maker did. And also what I'll do is I'll change this so it starts a little later. And you notice as I'm doing this it's moving it across. And you'll notice that once you start to get used to it, it does in fact make sense. But yes, it is a learning curve. And this line right here is where you are in the timeline, which can be dragged. So you can go to the specific parts of it. So anyway, let me rewind this to the beginning and play it. So there's the text, there's the fade, and it fades out because that's part of the text effect. And let me see if there's anything else I wanted to show you. Oh, if I wanted to uh, add in a, a background track, you do it from here. The text effects are all title, caption, and credits. And also pay attention to the top here because depending on what you're doing, you'll notice that when I click on certain things, certain things light up. For example, if I'm in a, a part of the movie which is not where the text is, you'll notice the text tools doesn't light up, but if I am, if I move this, then you'll see it and I can go right to it and change it, change the animation, do whatever I want, and so on. So anyway, let's just say I am done with this and I want to go ahead and publish it. Okay, so what I do here is I go to, I click on home and I can go here and I can save the movie locally. So what I can do is this I don't like about this because you don't have as many options as you did with uh, the old Windows Movie Maker, but still it's not bad. If you want the smallest possible size, just do for email or instant messaging, and then it goes up from there. This is the smallest, then larger, 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 and largest. Actually, the uh, 1080p high definition is the uh, largest. So anyway. Also, instead of doing it this way, this is also a definite advantage. You can publish direct to YouTube, which is right here. That is one of the options if you click that. And yeah, there it is. It prompts you for your username and your password, and then you can go right through. But I'm going, just going to save it locally. So you file, save movie, standard definition. And I will push it over to the desktop, and it labels it as my movie by default, and save. This is a really short one, so it won't take any time at all. And then when it's finished, it'll ask you if you want to open the folder where it is, close or play. I hit play. Windows Movie Maker comes up. And there it is. So, just to recap, that's how you put text in. That's how you do a simple transition. Um, you can do your YouTube export. Uh, you can save local, publish, whatever. And uh, there's also the ability, I forgot to mention this, to add plugins to it. Now, it goes to the Windows Live Photo and Video Blog. There is other things like sending direct to Facebook, uh, to Picasso, Pixel Pipe, Multiply. Some of you might like the Facebook option, because that's actually pretty cool, because you could actually just push it right to Facebook. But anyway, so I know I have not covered hardly anything to do with this software, but at least I got the basics out of the way, so when you download it, you won't be completely lost. Oh, and one other thing, uh, final note. Possibly one of the coolest things about Windows Live Movie Maker is that you can drop in MOVs and MP4s and other formats that you cannot do with Windows Movie Maker, the previous edition. This one will accept a lot more formats. And to get this question out of the way, will it import FLVs? Nope. <laughs> I tried. But anyway, that's it. Um, yeah, take it easy.